Hello guys, uh, I'm back with Ish and uh, our guest, Yuvraj Kinyu, who is a senior software engineer at MCB. He's going to talk about process automation reinvented for digital enterprise. So Yuvraj, maybe you can start by telling a bit about yourself and then we can start with the presentation. Okay, thank you. So, hello everyone. My name is uh, Yuvraj Kinyu. I work as senior software engineer at MCB. And in this session, I will be introducing to you a business process management tool called Kamunda BPM. In fact, it's a German product. And uh, so maybe you will ask questions. So why BPM? What is a need? How it can be of interest to you as a professional or even as a student, university student? And what you can achieve with it? We will see all this in a moment. Yeah. So. In this uh, virtual conference, there were, were many talks on DevOps, CI/CD, uh, web technologies like Vue, Angular, JavaScript, polymorphism, Agile, container platforms, Python, RPA, debugging, Linux, etc. Now it's time to apply all these concepts and create an ecosystem for Kamunda. A quick agenda will be uh, what is Kamunda, its component, deployment architectures, and the why, why using Kamunda, a bit about microservices, what is BPMN, DMN. So I know it's a bit like uh, too much of things uh, at a time. So let's go in the presentation now. Yes, so okay, what is Kamunda BPM? Sorry, it's a open source workflow and decision automation platform. Okay, it's lightweight and Java based framework. So Kamunda is a, like a plugin, which we can use it in a Spring Boot project or any enterprise project, Java enterprise project. It provides a BPMN standard compliant workflow engine. BPMN is a way of designing uh, workflows, okay, which uses lots of standards. And it provides DMN standard compliant decision engine. I will show you later on what is DMN. These are the components in Kamunda where we have uh, a business analyst or a developer who will design a process. And this process will be saved as a BPMN file. And then this BPMN file will be consumed by the engine, Kamunda engine. And the Kamunda engine itself is connected to a database. OK, you'll see here it's connected to a database. And normally, we have a lot of Java API, REST API by Kamunda. And you have also out of the box task list, which is a end user uh, front end. But you can also implement your own custom application. And then another uh, front end, uh, which is for the operators, which is a cockpit, and then the admin. So when I will do the demo, you will understand what I was trying to say. So the architecture of Kamunda now, like I, as I said, it is a very lightweight uh, uh, tool that we can embed in any project. So the first one is embedded. Embedded, in this case, the process engine is added as an application library to a custom application. Let's say it's Spring Boot, so we can add it like a dependency in Spring Boot. And then we have standalone. Standalone is like uh, you're installing something on the server. And then you can have other remote applications or other consumers which can talk with this server to get to user API. Then we have shared container manage. It's like uh, a container which we have on a container platform. OK, it is inside that container which is running. And then we have clustering model 
the same concept of containers, but here we have different containers connecting to the same database, to a shared database. So why Kamunda BPM? Built for developers using standards-based approach. Like I said, BPMN, it's a standard. It's uh, supported by OMG. Kamunda process automation software is open source, highly scalable, and designed to enable business and IT teams to collaborate on process automation. So it is open source. You can have the codes on GitHub, and it is highly scalable. Uh, because you can, uh, let's say, on, an, on a container platform, you have uh, installed Spring Boot. So this container, you can create many instances of it. Okay. And then the workflow and decision automation tools enables team to build software applications more flexibly, collaboratively, and efficiently. In fact, uh, with Kamunda, there's another tool called Kawimo. Uh, which uh, I will have. I have put the link uh, at the end of this slide. Of this slide, uh, it is collaborative designing of BPMN diagrams. So let's move on to different uh, reason why to go for Kamunda. The first one is automate human workflows. Well, automate human workflows. There are many mission critical processes which is still depend on manual task in a company, okay? Where a person have to act on this task so that the task can move on to other actors. Example, if a process helps to onboard a new customer and gets delayed, the customer might notice. Maybe it is a regulatory process that must be completed in a timely manner. Whatever the business need, people working remotely or in the office can easily be included in the automation process, saving time and keeping customers happy. But along with the human workflows, human tasks, which we call in Kamunda, we have other facilities like uh, other features like make a checker. We can add activities like send mail in a process. We can enforce complex process controls and even schedule which activities need task creation. So this is the, the power of using a good workflow system. Next one is orchestrate, observe, and analyze microservices. So like I was talking about uh, containers, okay? So when we talk about containers, so we can put in place different microservices. So let's say an example, uh, we want to have um, to onboard a customer at a bank, okay? We have to onboard a customer, so the customer has to bring all the documents like KYC documents, know your customers, and maybe during the process, he will have to uh, sign some documents as well. So the, these are two things. So to, to save all the KYC documents, to categorize them and save them, we can build something like a service independent of the main process, okay? So this uh, service, which can be called a microservice, we'll put it in a separate container, okay? In this container, uh, we'll, have, we'll be able only to uh, archive documents, categorize documents, etc. But we can have another microservice where we are, uh, giving the customer a document to sign, like e-signature. And both these containers, we can include Kamunda into them. So it's easy to orchestrate, observe, and analyze microservices. Get control of your RPA bots. So it's about robotic process automation. So normally, robotic process automation, we have three types attended, unattended, and cognitive. And uh, in RPA normally, we have some kind of workflows, but it is not like uh, uh, that uh, controlled and measured. So with this Kamunda, you, get, you can get control of your RPA bots. How? It's like you're orchestrating uh, processes where the processes will call your RPA bots. I have an example for that. I will show it later on. So you can have uh, 
you can connect your robotic process automation tool to Kamunda BPM to model, execute, and monitor end-to-end -end core business activities. Next one, modernized legacy business process management systems. What it means is uh, normally um, there are many companies which are using BPMS tools, okay? So these are a bit outdated. So to replace your BPMS tool, you can go for Kamunda. Why? Because Kamunda is very lightweight. Uh, it's uh, made for developers. It's highly scalable, okay? And uh, there are lots of support forums for it. Replace homegrown workflow automation system. When an organization first decides to implement workflow automation, it's common for a development team to build software from scratch, which is not a good idea in some cases where you're building a workflow system from scratch. This is not a good idea. At first glance, the homegrown approach is a logical starting point. The software can be tailored to address the organization's unique business requirements without the constraints of vendor technology or an external framework. But the approach has drawbacks. How? Sometimes it is uh, hard-coded. There are many things which are hard-coded and not easily customizable. There can be many dev complex development issues that need to be resolved. You won't be able to scale these types of homegrown workflows. And scalability problems are likely to occur, okay? A business-friendly visualization of the workflows either won't be provided or will require extensive effort to develop. So you won't have any visualization with a homegrown workflow. <clears throat> a stable and well-documented API. This one also you won't have where, where uh, you don't have the API properly documented so that when another system wants to call the workflow, uh, they will have to go through the codes or ask the developer how to call the API. And then another advantage or reason to choose uh, a workflow, a good workflow system is you can add workflow to your software product. Okay, so let's say, um, you want to have a you have a software which can uh, uh, sell products online. Okay, let's say a website to sell products online, and this website is connected to an ERP system. So you are uh, getting information from the ERP system to know which products are available in the stock. But with integrating a BPM tool like Kamunda it can make you uh, automate many things, even connect an RPA with a BPM, and all together, this can automate many things, can resolve many things, and uh, in terms of visualization reporting, you will have uh, lots of uh, statistics, lots of uh, data to, to see, and to also, Check how much time it is taking for a customer to buy a product on your website and to go on the ERP to fetch the information, to pay, uh, to pay, to do the payment, and also to get the product. So a BPM, a workflow, can do all this. It can track all the activities, whether it is uh, automated or manual. So it can track all this and and uh, we'll have a very good report at the end of the day to see how much time it has taken, what is the lead time, where it is stuck, do we need to re-engineer the process? Next is about microservices. So there's a very nice article on microservices written by Bern, who is a co-founder and chief technologist at Kamunda. Uh, for burn, in fact, there are no easy to adopt all in all scenario answers when we look at this table here. In fact, he talks a lot about, about microservices. So how we can integ integrate Kamunda uh, in the Java ecosystem and make them microservices. So there are different ways to do that. And each one, it depends on the company, okay? The microservices will depend 
depend on an organization processes and its complexity. So each organization will have different ways to set up their microservices. Okay, it's very important to have a good uh, architecture. Otherwise, uh, if you have some uh, two or three processors, so this can uh, jeopardize your uh, production environment. So I was talking about BPM 2.0. So, in fact, BPM 2.0 is a, is a standard to design uh, processors. And these are the symbols which are used. So, all the circular shapes are um, events. We can have a start event, a message event, a timer event, an error event, etc. And then we can have activities. Activity can be a human task which is also called a user task, or it can be a service task, which is an automated task. And we have other tasks as well, like a call activity, which is calling a sub process. And then we have gateways. Normally exclusive gateway is uh, only one outcome. So these are for decision. And you have a parallel gateway as well to do things in parallel. And then you have different types of uh, sequence flows, message flows, association, where you can connect your activities, okay? <clears throat> then you have DMN 1.3. DMN is decision uh, management, uh, it's uh, decision model and uh, notation. Okay, so this is a table. Uh, instead of like creating a table in the database and then we insert data into it, we read data from it. So Kamuda, in fact, provides a, a table, okay, a table to input all your data. And you can use this table also in your BPMN. So let's say you have a process which is going through a user task, and from that user task, it will go to a DMN uh, where it is checking, like here we have, uh, whether is it sunny or rainy. Let's say we have power sunny. So this DMN will return t-shirt. And t-shirt will be returned now to the process, to the BPMN. Okay, so as I said, I say again, I repeat, uh, we have a BPMN process. Inside the BPMN process, we'll have a DMN uh, activity, okay, where the process will pass through it and pass the input uh, variable and we'll get an output. So if you post sunny, we'll get t-shirt. So t-shirt will then we will be uh, saved in a variable in the BPMN. And it can call different DMN uh, in the process. So doing saving things in a DMN is easier to maintain. It's not like hard coding things in your code. So it can easily be uh, maintained, edited, or you can even insert new new values. And in fact, you can have multiple input columns here. So you can have different combinations and you can have multiple outputs as well. So it's a demo. Okay, so demo, in fact, we have uh, uh, URL here, which is start.camunda.com. So this will allow to download the different, depend the different dependencies. You have to set the dependencies and modules for Camunda. And then it, you have to click on the generate project. So you have to input the name here, the artifact, the version of Camunda BPM. Will you use H2 on this or in memory? what will be the Java version, and also what will be the modules that you will use. And if you want to add string security web, you can. And then you have to provide a username, okay? Username and password. And when you generate project, it will generate the, it will download the file. And then you have to download the file and uh, you open, it will resolve all the dependencies. It will download all the dependencies. 
So I will show you now the project here, which is in Spring Boot. Here we have all the dependencies. And then you have the main class here, which is uh, which will start the engine. And you will also see I have a YAML file here. OK, where it says where is the H2 files and uh, what is the ID and password when you will log in on the Kamunda uh, front end. Under the resource folder here, we have some BPMN, which I have already created and saved under this resource folder. So in fact, this is already started. So I will just go to the port here. So this is a screen, the front end where you will log in. And I will log in as admin admin. And once you log in, you will get this screen here, all the metrics. And if I click on processors, so this is a cockpit of Kamunda where you can see all the processors. These are the processors here. And you will see number of running instances. Okay. And uh, there's another tab here, decision, where if we, well, I don't have any DMN deployed. And then we have a task list. This task list, it will give you the list of tasks which have been created. So here you saw we have 11 process instances running. And in this task list, we have 11. So these are the 11 instances. Okay. So before going now in uh, more in detail here in cockpit, I will uh, open the Kamunda modeler where you can design processors. So normally here in the modeler, you have the start event, and then you have some symbols here. I can add different activities like this. And then I can change it to a user task, which is called a human uh, uh, task. And I can even change it to a service task or a business rule task, which is which we'll call a DMN. Call DMN, and this one maybe to archive uh, documents. And I can even have a send task, which will send a mail, notify users, and this one is. Uh, validate request by a user. So this is a very simple flow. And normally on the service tasks, I can come here and uh, just add a delegate expression where I can add a uh, Java beans. Let's say normally to add it, you have to put a dollar sign and curly braces, um, archive docs delegate. Or if you want, you can put a the full qualifier name for a Java class here, okay? And for the DMN as well, you have to mention the DMN that you will call. You have to put the reference here. And then notify users, you have to call same thing, or is it Java class or a delegate expression, okay? So if I run this process, what it will what will happen is when I create a new process instance, it will come here. It will come here to this uh, user task and will wait for someone to take an action. Once a user click on an action, based on the uh, variable which have been set, suppose these let's say this one is uh, validated. This one is uh, not okay. Based on the user input. Either it will take this route or this one. 
in fact, there are many best practices out there for BPMN and DMN also, how to put it in place. So now what I will do is let's check the BPMN which I created. So this BPMN here is a very simple one, the simplest one. Uh, we have uh, a create request and validate request, and it is using stream lanes. So the first one will be an initiator and validator. This is a um, advantage of using stream lane uh, where you can see the actors, but not in all cases we can use stream lane. Okay. And then we have another task, another BPMN called RPA. RPA here, in fact, I have put a message for event. Okay, so it will start via a message. Like I have published a message and there's a, a it, there's like a listener which took that message and it starts this process. So we have start in DB, which is service task, called the RPA, which is a service task, and then create a record, which is a call activity. And this call activity, if you see the properties, sorry, this one, I have not put, uh, okay. Normally it's for this one, it will create a request. It is, sorry. So create record, what it will do is, it is calling a sub process and the sub process name is called sub process underscore create. You see here, you will see the ID sub process underscore create. So once this sub process is uh, executed, it will return to the main flow. And the flow will continue until it ends. And then we have a third, uh, another flow here, which is uh, about assignment submission at a university. Here we have the process will really start assignment submitted. So we got a new assignment which has been submitted by a student. So a user will have to verify the documents, the assignment documents which have been submitted. And uh, we have a timer event here in case we have an SLA like uh, after one day or two days, no one is uh, uh, working on this request. So it will notify admin office. And then if all documents okay, it will move on to the next activity, which is check plagiarism on Turnitin. And from Turnitin, normally we get a similarity index report. It, if, if it is less than 25%, it will go to the next activity assigned to tutor. Otherwise, it will send a mail to the student to resubmit. And uh, after assigning the tutor, it will notify the tutor and here it's a tutor who has to come and after the correction has to click on complete and then it will move on to a, uh, if needed, to a reviewer. So normally in BPMN, in workflows, what we call this part here is called a happy flow, the happy path. Okay, it's a happy path. This is a happy path that uh, will be done in almost, in most of the cases. And those which are here are like exception, which can happen. It depends on the scenarios. So now I will trigger these flows via Postman. Before that, we'll check, make a check. We don't have any fresh, we don't have anything. So what I will do is we'll go to Postman. Uh, so I will have, have to copy the ID of the process. And normally when you call the API, normally when you call the API, you can pass some variables as well. So here I'm passing some variables. Okay. And normally you have a business key. A business key is a reference which you can give to a process instance. And just before I hit the send button, uh, on internet, on the Kamunda website, you will have all the REST API documentation. 
whether it is starting a process to get a list of tasks, to migrate a process instances from a old version process to a new version process, to send messages, to get information from the history, etc., etc. So now, now I will click on send. So what happened now is let's check the cockpit here. Refresh. So we have a process instance which has been created. So here, this one here, it's we call it a token. Okay. So this is a process instance, and uh, the flow is called a process definition. So we have one process instance, and if I click on send, it will go on like this. It will add more process instances. Here we have five. OK, and if I go to task list now, I refresh, I will get all these new process instances which have been created. I can click on one. I have to claim it. I can check the variables which I have added via Postman. And if I want to add new one, I can add new one here. I need to specify the name, the type, and also the values that I will add, assign to this variable. And if I click on complete, what will happen? It should move to validate request. Here it is. It has gone to validate request. If I refresh here, it moved to validate request. So it's a very basic workflow. OK? And uh, normally, what you can do also is assign uh, user groups to this task. Like uh, in a company, who are the users who will be able to create requests? Will they be? Like frontliners, clerks, uh, admin uh, staff, and who will be the validators, supervisors, managers, heads, etc. So, so this is an example of a swim lane. Now let's see another type of process. Let's check the RPA process. So I will start the process for RPA. Start. In fact, here there's a field, uh, sorry, a variable which is missing. So normally you have to provide all the variables. It is so now if we refresh cockpit here, you will see we have uh, up here we have 11 processors. OK, it's uh, normally what is happening is we cannot see any token because if you see at the top here, it's runtime. Runtime means those process instances which are still active, which have not been completed, which have not reached the end of the process. So if I go to history, which shows everything, all the process instances which have been created, and you will see the token where it has moved in the flow. So you will see there are some requests which have been created at 4 p.m. 33 here, 4.33. And uh, here you can even view the heat map. What is a heat map? It's where the tokens are passing most of the time. So the darker it is, so we have more hits. We have more tokens passing through this task. Like here, it's darker, and these two are darker compared to these two. And this one, it is uh, it is not highlighted here because uh, I have not sent anything in handle error. 
And you will see as this calling a sub process. So let's see, let's open a process instance. So if we open a process instance, you can click show call process instances. So if I click on it, it will show me the sub process, what it has done in the sub process. So it has gone through this flow. Okay, and this is a very basic one. And as you can see, you have all the start time and time. You can you can also see the user tasks who work on it. And you can use REST API to get all this information, all these statistics. Now we'll have a demo for the last process, which is the assignment BPMN. So let me take the ID here, assignment. So I started one, two, three. Refresh it here. So you see submit assignment. We have three instances, which is in verified documents. And also you will notice we have the business key. Well, I have not changed the business key, but normally it must be unique uh, keys so that uh, you can refer to it later on. Let's say if it is in a company. So uh, normally for an application in Kamunda, it's easier to have a reference, like let's say uh, to um, onboard customers. So you can have a reference like customer 001, or you can concatenate the date and time as well. So if a user wants to uh, raise an alert, an issue, that there's an issue on this reference, so they will just give you the reference and you can easily debug uh, using that reference. So here, as you can see, it is in verify submitted, verify document submitted. I will go to task list. I will click uh, one of them here, claim it. And normally in the task list, uh, it is uh, out of the box as I mentioned, but you can even have your own uh, custom task list in Angular, Vue, or React. So you have the diagram here, and even this diagram, you can uh, get it from uh, the REST API. So I will click on complete. Let's check what is the uh, decision here. So document is equal to OK. Document not equal to OK. So here what we have, document is OK. So it will go to check for plagiarism. And here it will go, is similarity exceed or not? Here it exceed, no, it is less. And then it will come, it should come here, correct assignment and comments, okay? Because these are service tasks. And uh, you will notice I have put a logger delegate. So if I go to my codes, the logger delegate is simply just say logger.info, which is displaying some of the properties of the processing sensors. And where we have the logger delegate, it's the add component here, this annotation, which is uh, identifying it as a Java beans here, logger delegate. So it is normally it is recommended to use the delegate expression instead of Java class. Okay, so let's click uh, on complete now. Correct assignment and add comments. Okay, so if you check the history, you will see who claim it. And uh, if I refresh the cockpit here, you will notice uh, we have uh, one token here and two tokens here. Okay. And uh, it can go on like this. I can submit again. It will go to review assignment marks. Let's submit it, complete. Review assignment marks. So it has moved to review assignment marks. And here, if I click on complete, you will not see it in task list, not even in cockpit. Runtime, you will have to go to history. And the history will show you what was the 
the path it has taken to complete the flow. Now, this time, if you check the heat map, well, we don't have too many. It's only the first activity, which is uh, darkest. And also, I will do, let's do a change in this BPMN quickly. Uh, let's say we will add a another task here, which is a user task. Oh, capture uh, assignment information. It's a user task, so I will save it. Normally, I'm opening opening this uh, BPMN from the uh, where it is stored from the resource folder here. Okay, so assignment, the one I has open is found in the resource folder. So I will restart the engine. And normally this logger delegate here was displaying all the logs here in this uh, console. Okay, he started, so I will go back to cockpit. And you will notice here in version, we have two versions. If I click on version two, we don't have anything here. And if I click on send to start a new process instance for assignment, if I refresh it here, you will see it will be created in the latest one. Okay, so we have some process instances in the in a previous version, and we have some one in the new version. And normally, what we have is called a migration. So I can migrate process instances from version one to version two. Okay, I will select the instances. So we have two, and I click migrate process instance, execute migration, observe progress. So normally this will move all the process instances in the version two, okay? Now, one thing also which I have not mentioned is normally uh, this is a message, the RPA, okay, it is it starts with a message. So just think now that you have BPMN processors where we don't have any human task, any user task. We have only some service task. Okay, let's say we have service task here. All these are okay. Let's keep the notification. So we have many service tasks. And we can even add some kind of, of error handling. In case of errors, what should be done? Error boundary. So in all the service uh, tasks, you can add error handling. And uh, you can call API. You can call uh, an RPA. You can call a mail service or any other microservices. So. What you are doing here, what you can achieve like this is some sort of micro process, micro process orchestration. Okay, so you are orchestrating things via processors. Okay, so it's easier to uh, monitor what is, uh, suppose you start uh, this, this process here and you have like uh, 20,000 uh, process instances. So you can monitor what is, uh, how is your process behaving? Is it uh, uh, functioning well, or is there any issue? Do you have any uh, bug, any bottleneck in your process? Do you have to re-engineer your process? So you can find out all this in the cockpit. Okay, so this was a demo, and then let's switch back to the presentation. 
So Kamunda BPM, um, you have uh, the ecosystem of Kamunda. So we have online documentation. You have the best practices, uh, mainly for enterprise users, but uh, on the forums, you have many things you can look at. You have Stack Overflow. You have question corners on Zoom and Slido every month. There are many tutorials on YouTube and Vimeo. And as I said, BPMN and DMN, which is supported by OMG. So you can go on the OMG, uh, on the bpm.org website to look at all the BPMN examples and DMN as well. International communities, you have support for enterprise users, the local communities, which is in progress. You have the conferences in different countries. And uh, actually, there will be a virtual conference. And then we have the forum as well. And next one, there are some links here. OK. And uh, this is the Kamundakon, which will be on 8th and 9th October. So you can register if you want to learn more about Kamunda. And there are some uh, links here, kamunda.com, bpm.io, kawimo.com, bpm.org, GitHub, where you have many examples about Kamunda. And you have the, a very interesting uh, website, uh, which is uh, um, written by uh, Bern Drucker. OK, so you have many interesting topics on microservices. And recently, has written a book on microservices, on processors as well process services, and then you have the start.kamunda website. So that's all for me for this quick introduction on Kamunda. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuvraj, for such an amazing presentation. I am someone who never used Kamunda. I heard about it, but uh, I never even uh, go search what it is. But for such a, a small presentation, it, I, I would say an introduction, it was really informative and I could understand yeah, what, what I can do with Kamunda. Maybe Ish, can you talk a bit about that? Thank you very much, Yuvraj. Uh, I was really looking forward for this presentation. In fact, I uh, tweeted about it, uh, I think at the beginning of the conference on, on first day. And I tagged Kamunda BPM in that because uh, <clears throat> I've been experimenting with Nextcloud, and I saw uh, there is an extension to integrate Kamunda with Nextcloud, so that you know when you have your workflows and everything, you could uh, move around your files in the different directories of Nextcloud based on what, how you define your process and all. So, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is giving up after the three days hmm. of the conference. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's that was something that I wanted to experiment and maybe use it within the company where um, I work. So I have a question. Uh, are you using Camda right now just as a hobby? So uh, tinkering with that, experimenting, or you believe it's uh, something that can be used in production? Sorry, production. <clears throat> OK, no, in fact, uh... Uh, using it in production, okay? Oh, and cool. uh, like I mentioned, uh, microservices, so we have uh, many microservices as well, and uh, you can easily integrate it in any microservice, put it in a container, and then you use it. And uh, it will connect, you can make it connect to the same database. So you're just distributing the loads on different microservices because you, because you can have like uh, heavy and very intensive processors where All you right. want it to run in only one microservice. And uh, if uh -huh. you put everything in one basket, it will like a uh, uh, performance issue. You get lots of performance issues. OK, so I have a second question. Uh, knowing that Kamunda BPM is an open source software, but it is also backed by a big company. Oh, well, uh, you already mentioned about uh, Kamunda being a German company. and. Uh, in fact, it is one of the reasons why uh, when I was experimenting with Nextcloud, Nextcloud itself being uh, another German company and has a, co a community of, uh, of contributors from around the world, uh, mm -hmm. would you recommend uh, a company, a small company in Mauritius, to use Kamunda simply the open source part or go for a, I don't know, an enterprise solution by contacting Kamunda, the company itself? Okay, well, if we talk about small companies like 
SMEs, so, exactly. SMEs, I would recommend they go for the open source uh, community version first, experiment it, mm -hmm. deploy it in your environment. You can even put it in production, even the community version, and uh, you can experiment it. And then after like uh, some uh, some uh, month, then you can decide if you want to go for the enterprise version. Mm -hmm. In fact, the enterprise version, you are you will only pay for uh, the support. Okay. okay, you will pay for so, the support. Yes. Uh, no, I was just trying to compare. So when you say you pay only for the support uh, and nothing, uh, not something fancy that adds up. So it's a bit like uh, Linux distributions. You have uh, Canonical has Ubuntu, which is open source and free. Anybody can use. Then on top of that, Canonical offers support, which is only, you know, when you have a truck. You have a trouble. You have a problem with your machine, but you do not have a team that can fix it. They come and fix it. So it's mostly like managed services and exactly. things like that. Okay, exactly. cool. That's that's very interesting. Uh, um, yes. And just on. one thing I wanted to add is, you know, uh, Camuda in fact provide uh, uh, two releases per year. Uh, right. Okay. It's yeah. every six months, so there are lots mm -hmm. of security security patches and new features which are added. And also, I would recommend uh, and tell all the university, university students who are listening, watching this video right now, you mm -hmm. can use it in your dissertation. Don't hesitate to use it. Whether okay. it is a blockchain solution, whether it is a payment solution, ERP, uh, any solution you are implementing, you can use Kamunda. It will add more complexity to your dissertation and you will have a good viva and good points as well. Uh, very good suggestion. Thank you very much, Yuvraj. And uh, on Welcome. that note, we are 16.51. In about 10 minutes, uh, the closing ceremony will start in Batcave. Uh, Yuvraj, thank you very much. And sorry we're running short in time. Uh, we will have to rush. Um, but I do invite you to, oh. you know, uh, for the future conferences, uh, for the future events, if you have thank anything you. else, on top of Kamunda that you would like to show, which you haven't been able to do today, uh, do submit a paper. Uh, sure. You will find uh, details about our future events, maybe meetups or other events on the MSCC page. So I would really look uh, forward to see you again as a speaker uh, and learn more about Kamunda. Thank you very much, Yuvaj. Okay, Thanks.